the Houston Outlaws deciding to spice up this Monday afternoon by announcing their final addition to their 2023 roster, Violet. Sorry to say it, Shock fans, we all knew this was coming eventually, as he wasn't part of the Shock's roster announcement back in December, but now it's done. His era with the San Francisco Shock is over, which is really crazy to think about. You always associate Violet with the Shock. It's going to be weird seeing him in any sort of other uniform. He's built such an amazing legacy and career over there in San Francisco. He's won titles. He's earned the respect of many of his peers. He's arguably been the best flex support to ever touch the league stage. He's done so much for this one franchise, and I'm sure all of the fans will always be very thankful for what he did for them. But now it's time for a brand new journey. He's moving over to Houston, one of his rivals from the last couple of years. While the move to Houston is good, it's a little disappointing in a way because this all but confirms that Violet will continue to be playing main support rather than going back to flex support. It was my hope and dream that he'd try and be a flex support again just because he made such an amazing career for himself on that role and he's so disgusting, but so be it. I mean, the Outlaws were one of the only remaining teams left in the West that really needed a main support, so this is a good fit, and it makes sense for both sides. It's a tough ending to see him leave San Fran, but at least Viola is still in the league. That's the big takeaway from this, regardless of what he ends up accomplishing with Houston. I'm just glad the man is back for another season, and he's not contemplating retirement just yet. The league needs this guy. He's one of the longest ending players we still have. I love me some Violet, so it's great to have him here still. Talking about this fit with the Houston Outlaws... It's a little strange having him and Shu play together because they both are rather aggressive players, but we have seen Shu play well with Funny Astro. That's completely fine. He's shown that he can play with an aggressive main support partner, still succeed, keep his team from feeding and playing poorly. It works. I think that him and Violet should do just fine together. And if anything, maybe Violet can get even better since he's going to have even more time and experience on the main support role. Perhaps he can kind of refine his craft even more and take his game to the next level, which would be great because in all honesty, he was pretty solid as a main support player in his first year on that role for San Francisco in 2022. I'm not going to sit here and tell you he was the best main support in the Overwatch League, but a good argument could be made he was in that top five or so, which is really impressive for a first year player after changing roles. Violet showed that he can play Lucio aggressively, do a lot of healing, and very much outpace his opponents to get Sound Barrier. His Brigitte and his Mercy and all that could still use some work, but I'm sure he can get there over time. And let's not forget that if it calls for it, if the meta does indeed head towards some sort of double flex support composition, then Violet and Shu could be one of the most dangerous and terrifying duos in Overwatch League history. Violet on Zen and Shu on Bap sounds like a nightmare to deal with, man. Again, it really will be meta-dependent and if it's something they can even run in a viable situation, but bro, if the time calls for it, other teams better look out. They're gonna dominate. Generally, though, I like the move. For a long time, the rumor apparently was that Skewed was going to Houston, but that is all but dead now, as the Outlaws said that Violet is the final piece to their roster. So that's cool, it's whatever. Skewed and Shu obviously have a long history together, but Violet on paper is a better player with a higher ceiling, so I don't think Outlaws fans are going to complain that much about this. If anything, it's going to be celebrated because he's Violet, because of the name recognition, because of the fact that he has won championships before. This is what you want if you're an Outlaws fan. Having this type of guy come in and boost your team to a new level is great. It's weird that he's going to do it on main support instead of his typical flex support, but we already know that he can succeed on this position, so I'd have confidence in him. Violet gives you that needed experience. I mean, they already have a lot of veterans, but it doesn't hurt to have even more of it. He gives you a good personality who can help lighten the mood. He's a star player, of course, and he could be a real leader for this team. I know that sounds crazy because, again, all these guys are very capable, but last year, Violet showed us what he could help do for a young shock team with a bunch of rookies around him. And I think because of that experience and him knowing what it takes to win a championship, that he can push some of these guys who haven't won before to new levels. Him and Fearless both. So even if Violet isn't necessarily on his best role potential-wise, I could see him doing a lot of good for the Houston Outlaws. And right now, because of how their team looks from top to bottom you'd have to imagine that they're going to be competing in the playoffs by the time we reach the end of next year. Hell, if things click and they do well enough together, 
They could be maybe competing for a championship. They have that kind of potential, so why not? I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but as of right now, they're looking like one of the scarier teams, not just in the West, but in general. But of course, if the Outlaws are going to get there, there are some question marks that need to be solved. There are some hurdles they need to get through, such as how Violet and Shu do together as a duo. I think they'll do fine, but you never know. Then you have the tank situation and how that goes. Fearless is your one and only tank, which could be worrisome. How well will he be able to flex under those other roles is a complete mystery. Then you have to think about somebody like Happy. Can he be as good as Merritt was in the system last year? We really don't know for certain. And on top of that, there's a brand new head coach in town. So that's something that needs to kind of be looked at as well and discussed. So the Outlaws have a bunch of tasks that they have to get through first. But on paper, at least, they're looking pretty good. I'll leave it there. I'm sure that it's a sad day for Shock fans, but an exciting day for Houston fans. We'll see how things go by the time we reach the start of the 2023 season. But before we head out of here, I wanted to report on some older news that happened last week. If you're not aware, the LA Gladiators picked up a third support player in Babel. Babel, if you aren't too familiar, used to play for the London Spitfire in Season 3 as a DPS player. And then after that, he transitioned into support in Contenders. And recently, he had some really good showings for O2 Blast, and in general, the last year or so has seen his stock increase tremendously, and a lot of people will vouch for this guy and tell you that he deserves a shot in Owl. I'm not a contender's aficionado, if you will, but I've seen what he can do. I'm liking the progress that he's shown since the last time we've seen him in Owl. I'd say, why not give him a chance? His ceiling seems pretty darn high as a flex support player. He's still young. He can still be molded into something. We've never seen him play this position at the Owl level before. So there's a lot of stuff that could go right for him, and I think the Gladiators could end up getting a pretty valuable signing out of him. Mechanically, he's going to be sound and just about as good as anyone else you can really think of because of that experience on DPS in the past. I'm expecting both his Zen and Kiriko to be very solid and for the Gladiators to benefit a lot from it and maybe pick up some extra wins from his playmaking in some critical maps. Now, there is the question of whether or not he'll be the starter on the Gladiators, because again, they do have Lastro. So we really don't know what's going on over there. Maybe Lastro rides the bench instead. I'm not too sure in that regard. Maybe they'll split playtime. Maybe one of them will be a specialist. In a double flex support meta, sure, they'll be fine. But if Babel does get some starting time, I could see him and Astro doing some scary things together as a really aggressive duo. If you're trying to compensate and still remain competitive, I think this is the type of signing you need to make. You need to take a risk on somebody who has shown flashes that just needs to be molded into something through good coaching, which the Glads have, so I approve of this. This team isn't bad by any stretch. Dante, Kevster, Yaki, Lastro, Funny Astro, say that 10 times fast, and now Babel is fine. It's a perfectly good core. It's just that the West is extremely stacked, so this type of team might not get the job done. It's sad to say that because they are good, but that's the truth. I'm happy for Babel. I like the Babel signing. But sadly, the Gladiators are noticeably worse than what they were before, and even though I do like what Babel brings to the table, he is a downgrade no matter how you see it, because they lost Shu. It's nothing to do with Babel's skill level. Shu is just a generational player. This is someone that is irreplaceable. It's an automatic downgrade and L unless you get somebody of the same caliber. So Babel, he sadly has some pretty big shoes to fill. It's not exactly fair to him, but that's the world he lives in, if he is the starter over Lastro. I'm hoping he does well and he proves the haters wrong and can maybe even play better than expected, but the Gladiators are trending in the downward direction. It's a rough situation to be in, but they did lose a lot of key pieces, so we'll see how they respond. I'm expecting them to still be competitive with this type of roster on their hands, but it's not going to be the same, and Glad's fans need to be prepared for that. The fact that they still have Kevster, though, is a good sign. As long as you have him, you're in a position to win but that championship contender status has kind of left the building. Thinking about this in more simple terms, just for Babel, like an individual's point of view, this is good for him. This is well-deserved. He's been playing extremely well on the best team in contenders, and it's a good pickup for the Glads as well. As a sucker for redemption arcs and seeing someone make their comeback, I'm really rooting hard for Babel to do well. 
He deserves it for grinding his butt off after not being an owl anymore for a couple of years. This is something that he's probably been looking forward to, and I truly hope he makes the most of this opportunity and can maintain a career for years to come. But that's about all I have to say in regards to Babel joining the LA Gladiators, so that's going to wrap up this news recap for the week. Let me know what you think about Violet joining the Houston Outlaws as well as Babel going to the Glads down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to stay up to date with all things Overwatch League news related, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of my new videos when they're uploaded. And until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.